Hi, I'm Jason Lindela, risk consultant with SFM, the work comp experts. Today, we're going to talk about GHS. Let's get started. So why are we going to Global Harmonized System, or GHS? The old standard allowed different formats and labels for your material safety data sheets. The new standard brings the U.S. into alignment with GHS. It allows specific criteria for classifying chemicals and a specific format for your safety data sheets and labels going forward. Material safety data sheets are now going to be called safety data sheets. They will contain the information on a chemical, aid in the selection of safe products, and help prepare employers and employees to respond effectively to exposures and emergencies. As they were before, they must be readily available. Safety data sheets must be in a uniform format by June 1st of 2015. They must have identified section numbers, a total of 16, specific headings, and associated information under each heading. The first section is the identification. It must have the product identifier and its common names, the manufacturer information, phone numbers, and the recommended use and restrictions on use as well. The second section is the hazard identification. It must identify the hazards regarding each chemical, the required label elements, and describe each hazard and its hazard category. The third section is the composition information on ingredients. Section number four is the first aid measures. This would include symptoms and the required treatment by different routes of exposures. Section number five is the firefighting methods, the chemical hazards from a fire and how to extinguish if there is a fire resulting from that chemical use. Section six is what to do during an accidental release. It's gonna have emergency procedures, protective equipment, and precautions. It's also going to tell you how to contain and clean up that chemical. Section number seven is handling and storage. How precautions for safe handling and storage. Section number eight is the exposure controls and how to protect yourself. That's going to include the required PPE, personal protective equipment that must be used while using this chemical. Section number nine is the physical and chemical properties. Number 10 is the stability and reactivity of the chemical. Section 11 is the toxicological information. That's gonna include the routes of exposure, the acute and chronic effects and symptoms, and the measures of toxicity. Section 12 is the ecological information. Section 13 is the disposal considerations. 14 is the transport information and section 15 is any other regulatory information. One thing to note, OSHA will not enforce sections 12 through 15 since other agencies regulate this information. Section 16 will include any other pertinent information. One important part about GHS is the new labeling format. More will be defined and will be required by June 1st of 2015. One thing to remember, is distributors can ship products labeled by the manufacturer under the old system up until December 1st of 2015. The label must have a product identifier. It must have a pictogram, which is determined by a chemical hazard classification. We will go through the required pictograms in a moment. Signal word, which indicates the severity of the chemical hazard. Danger for mo means more severe or warning for less severe. It must have a hazard statement. These are standardized phrases that describe nature and degree of the hazard. It must have a precautionary statement. Describe the recommended measures that should be taken to protect yourself. It must also have the name, address, and telephone number of the manufacturer. As you can see, this is a sample label that will fall under the new GHS standard going forward. Now we'll go through all of the new eight pictograms that may be required on a label. The first one, as you can see, is the health hazard. And each label must be a square with a red border put on a point. The health hazard means it could be a carcinogen, it may cause reproductive issues, it may cause respiratory sensitivity, or aspiration toxicity. The bottom label is a gas cylinder. That means that product is a gas under pressure. 
The top label on this page is a flame. That will be used for flammables, self-heating chemicals, or self-reactives. The bottom one is an exploding bomb. That means that will be on any explosive chemical, a self-reactive, or potentially an organic peroxide. The next one is the exclamation mark. That may mean different things to you and I. It could be an irritant, a skin sensitizer, could cause narcotic effects, or respiratory irritation. The bottom one is skull and crossbones, acute toxicity. That means it could be fatal or toxic if you are exposed to that product. The next one is corrosion. That means that it is going to eat metal. Odds are it will probably eat your hand. So corrosion means it could cause skin corrosion, eye damage, or it may also ruin other metals. The next one is a flame over a circle. That will be used on any oxidizer chemicals. The bottom one is non-mandatory, and that means that chemical can impact the environment. It may cause aquatic toxicity, so care should be taken when using this chemical in the outdoors or near rivers, streams, or lakes. One important reminder is all labels must not be removed or destroyed from the manufacturer. They must be legible and prominently displayed. Always regard unlabeled containers as dangerous. Many times, chemicals are moved into portable or second containers, and those must also be labeled. They must be labeled with the original manufacturer label or have the product identifier and physical and health hazardous warnings. The label can include words, pictures, or symbols that provide information on the hazards of that chemical. The NFPA diamond or HMIS labels are common. The NFPA diamond is shown on the screen. It has a blue square which impacts your health. The red is how flammable that chemical is and the yellow is how reactive it is. It will also has a special hazard information section located in the white square. The hazardous materials identification system or HMIS is shown on the screen as well. It has the same color as the NFPA diamond just in a different format the health, flammability, reactivity, and any personal protection required. One thing to remember that the GHS classifications versus the NFPA or HMIS ratings are a little bit different. The GHS categories go from 1 being most dangerous to 4 being least dangerous, while the NFPA and HMIS ratings go from for being the most dangerous or highest flammability in this example, down to one or zero being the lowest potential hazard. Thanks for listening. Remember, this is a basic GHS introduction. Now you want to take it a step further and talk about your site-specific requirements. For more basic information on GHS, winter slips and falls, or stretching, please visit our website, sfmic.com. Thanks.